other reversals should be considered? Yeah. Oh, the Birth of the calf, very nice act. And uh, when Peter's bell rings, that makes everybody leave the scene and little calf is left. And then Peter, who's later in the pageant, the butcher of that calf, comes and picks up the calf. And we need that act for the pageant. So it's very important that we do this right. And we almost have it. So it's, it's good. It's coming. Uh, okay, I have a job. The, the bandstand, the small part of the bandstand got put on the hill. And everyone sat on it and it kind of busted up the legs. Anyway, can someone it's, fix it? It's already done. Can already done. Okay, and can someone make a skirt I'm for it out of black it, fabric? Great. Okay. Well, uh, w we should have some rehearsals this morning. For example, at 10 o'clock, there wants to be a grasshopper rehearsal, is that correct? Yes. I'd like to have a tiger act rehearsal this morning. At what time? At, after this meeting at 9? But at 10, this is people who, this is an act that hasn't been figured, so people who aren't in an act and would like to be grasshoppers. <coughs> At 10 o'clock. Are you going to ring the bell? Are there a couple of people with sprained ankles who could sit in the museum today? <laughs> There's one. Oh, great. Yeah, again, once again, everybody take a deep breath before you do anything really stressful <laughs> or hard to do. And then go to it. Just slow down, take a deep breath. Let it go. That's great. Let's all do it. Watch out, everybody. Yeah. I have an announcement about um, people here on the farm. If it's someone who doesn't seem to know why they're here at all, or they came just to be a part of this, uh, they should also speak to Annie or Jane or me. They may be transformed into volunteers. They may be transformed into volunteers, or they may be someone that we just cannot accommodate here. We, we don't have any more room for people. I have a really exciting announcement. How about like 10 people would quickly move the outhouse? There's a new hole across the street right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is anyone going to Couriers this morning? Or can I borrow someone's car to run to go there? You can go in my truck, yeah. Wait, I'm in here! Are we going to walk it or lay it down? We're Twist gonna it? it? We're going to walk it. That end is going to get this way. Can you lift that end up? That's the heavier end. Rotate it. Why don't we just rotate it on rotate this, it this point? On the point, yeah. I don't know. Maybe wait. They're going to twist it. Till it's I don't know. Maybe we should all decide that. I think that. it's That's a good idea. Rotate it on the point. There is no, 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 no,
and the red building and the white building, those are like the sewing room and the work room and the other things, other rooms. <coughs> and, um, okay, here we are at, at the museum, the entrance. And as you can see over there, um, they're still working on the circus, which we're going to do in a few days. Our funny cannon is on film. <laughs> it seems oh, so thin. One, no, no, this one got third, three girls instead of two. Very really? Heavy. Well, I don't think you'll find anymore. Let's okay. see how it works. <laughs> and it starts all over. <laughs> I think that's what it is. And then this side, which I can't do either by themselves. So this is for the accordion act? This is for the accordion act, which I will be a total superstar in. <laughs> <laughs> If I just practice and practice and practice! <laughs> Now this is what happens. Everything is gone. There comes the signal. The boss arrives, and then it comes to the door. Just right. finger there. No, yeah. there we go. Your fingers. You lose your finger. He's tight. No. <laughs> but she this is a two adult job and a one kid job. Ready? One, two, three. There. Is that good? Next. You got him. Sure. Sure. You gonna try to stand up? No mother is the tallest woman in the world. This is why you keep your head up in the air. No, this is how you fall. You fall on your knees and you put your hands. That's how you fall for real. This is how you really. I'm running. I'm happy. No, I'm running. Can I catch you? Good fall, Max. 
Voilà. Nice act, nice, nice. The next act should enter into this, into this accent. The next act, what is it? So this is a Sicilian marionette, and it was in a play about the Crusades. And every night of the year, 365 episodes would be played out in the course of a year, showing the Crusades. The history of puppetry is really very, very ancient, and goes back to, I think, the roots of drama, literature. The earliest theaters were probably reenactments of hunts using, using animal skins and animal masks and using that as magic to try to ensure a good hunt or a good harvest. A lot of the puppets that we make are in big groups and often we find a lot of people who want to participate in what we're doing. We are not very strong on finesse and subtlety. The puppets are mainly pretty one-sided. <laughs> so this is the sewing puppet and all she does is, you can see what this was, was sewing. This is the weeping puppet with the tear running down her cheek, and the puppeteer inside would slowly let the tear come down the cheek. These puppets were used in political demonstrations representing the Vietnamese people or protesting the war. There was the and why are these so miserable? They look miserable. What? They look miserable. Miserable. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Because a lot of the condition of the world is really desperate, I think. There's a lot of things to be worried about and upset about. With parade in these summer parades and all our figures, most of them would be monsters and dragons and hideous creatures that would, would be quite scary. And it felt nice after a while when these puppets were made to have big giant representatives of kind of ordinary life. This washroom represents the old owners of this farm. That was Daisy Dopp and her husband Jim Dopp. Her great-grandfather actually built the barn in 1863 when during the Civil War this area grew, um, raised a lot of sheep and because of the war they needed wool for blankets and for uniforms and so during wartime this, this area thrived. But she wrote articles for the local newspapers and describing her childhood memories of growing up on this farm, describing how the farm was built, how they um, hauled the bell. We, we use a bell to mark the ends of rehearsals and the meals and things like that. What's for dessert? That's the question. What's for dessert? What is it? Yes! I was worried about a skunk the last time I was here. Yes! Oh shit! How do you look, yeah? No, but like when I'm really, when I'm kind of sick, calls the garlic. <laughs> yeah, I could make, I could build a little for the store. Garlic perfume, garlic medicine, garlic or meat sauce. No, 
two. I mean, or one, you know, five, the yeah. Five minutes. Whoa! Oh, look at that. Is that garlic? Oh, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm so glad. That's what I mean by this. Gaspacho. What? Gaspacho? No. Good man. The things, the pictures and sculptures which are the meat of puppetry are ordered by a strange ambition, namely to provide the world with an unfragmented and uncontrollably large picture of itself, a picture that only puppetry can draw, a picture which praises and attacks at the same time. Sculpture is not exempt from earthquakes, no music from volcanoes, and by the same token, none of the arts are exempt from politics. As the German puppeteer Hölderlin has said, understand the freedom to rise. Or, as the rooster said to the donkey in the Bremen town musicians, come on, something better than death we find anywhere. <laughs> Mine is just goes easier still than 15 years ago. You can feel it. You can feel it. 
take out more Vaseline or something. Gotcha. <laughs> I can see you struggle at the beginning, and mine just picks up and goes easily. Oh, I'm not noticing that I'm struggling. What I'm doing is you mean the catching and friction wise. Friction wise, yeah. They're all in the big belt. Mine just goes so smooth. It's all in the big belt. The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. necessary labor. I mean, ding, 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 spaghetti. And the bread oven is made out of this clay over a base of, of branches that we cut in, in the swamp called alders. And if you look inside, you can see the, do you see those stripes? Yeah. That's where the branches were. It was like a big upside down basket. And then the, when the fire was made there, it burned out the branches. And left the marks there. Uh, 
another connection of bread and theater is the fact that the bread that we we make, Peter Schumann, the director, learned, learned how to bake, bake this from, from a Polish servant girl in, or like babysitter, who, who helped his mother in Silesia, that's a part of Germany that is now Poland, and they have very good rye bread, sourdough rye, and the grain, we have a grinder there, and we grind the grain ourselves, and the bread is not at all like your supermarket bread. You really have to chew it. You really have to put some work into it. Mm. But then you get something very good for that. And when our theater is successful, we feel it's the same way. You've got to think about it. doesn't like tell you everything. It's not like Wonder Bread. It just like, there it is. Here's the story. This is what it means. You've got to do some figuring yourself in the theater, in our theater. And if this play is successful, then at the end, you probably feel it was worth the work. <laughs> And if it wasn't successful, then you think, what in the world was that about? Let's say we didn't do the, um, the yeah, we just started with that one, so it needs a little more. Communistic settlements. Communities practicing common ownership of goods. Communistic settlements were known in ancient and medieval times. 
but the flowering of such groups occurred in 19th century America. Other groups were non-Christian, often anti-religious and utopian. Then there's the good things in life, best things in life are free text. And then comes a the little the gunman. We need some music from you. When do you enter, Mike? I think I'd come in through the door and sit down. opportunity to talk to you about my friend Herbert Marcuse because I feel Herbert Marcuse is really misrepresented in the circus. Herbert Marcuse formulated his late philosophy. Neither the growing productivity nor the high standard of living depend on the threat from without, but their use for the containment of social change and perpetuation of servitude <coughs> does. Herbert Marcuse formulated his late philosophy. It's simple, it's what he comes to in the end. This is in one of the letters, be nice, that's what Marcuse means. He says his whole life's work is summed up. Be nice, look at this, truth, truth is good. It's not bad, truth is good, you know what is bad? This is Marcuse too, here, greed, greed is bad. This is stuff the audience can remember. They can go home singing, greed is bad. They can't sing that stuff on the wall. Italian Renaissance style stage, an exact replica of La Scala in Milan. Two weeks in the making, with a cast of thousands of little bits of cardboard. Welcome to the, the Triumph of Capitalism. Capitalism. The economist, Adam Smith, was the first to idealize self-interest <laughs> and the free market. I have seen a small manufactory, a pin factory, where one man draws out the wire, another straightens it, a third cuts it, a fourth points it, and a fifth grinds it. Every individual intends only his own gain. 
And he is in this, led on by an invisible hand. <laughs> by pursuing his own interest, he frequently promotes that of the society more effectually. If than you like Andrew Carnegie, have got but one thing done. You can take it and invest it, and in very little time, it will become a quarter, then a dollar or two or three. And soon you'll be the owner of a great big company. But not everyone agreed with Adam Smith's romanticization of greed. There was, for example, Karl Marx, who wrote the first critical analysis of capitalism in the library of the British Museum. Capitalist society creates a propertyless class of people who have no alternative uh, but to sell their labor as um, a commodity, yeah. <laughs> the final death struggle of capitalism is, in, in, uh, is inescapable, yeah. <laughs> Money grows and money multiplies. And money talks and money walks and money says goodbye. Near the end of World War II, the victorious capitalist powers decided to remake the world in their own image. They created the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to control the international flow of money. And so began the era of multinational capitalism. And now your credit is so strong, there's nothing you can't get. So what the hell, just buy it all and get yourself in debt. And when it all comes crashing down and the cops the holders cry cheat, with a bank account in Zurich, you'll retire on easy street. Smart money knows and money knows and money. We sign a lot of our arts with gold price tags to kind of try to um, underscore, you know, the arts, art as commodity. But instead of making it an uh, inaccessible commodity, is we're trying to make it a totally accessible commodity where, you know, the viewers can completely participate as purchasers and as, as you know, can be empowered as, you know, like, like buy the art, look at the art, throw away the art do whatever they want just with spare pocket change. So we have no qualms about producing commodities. That's what we're doing. We're not pretending we're not, but we're just trying to do it on a, on a real low type of level, on a, on, in an accessible and local economy type of way. And uh, it's whatever feels right, I guess. So what's this for, Linda? This is for the Pine Forest Village. You know, we put flowers out there in all the houses every year, and um, there's not a whole lot left this year. My white phlox hasn't come in yet. But I've got Lee and Regina are bringing flowers this afternoon. Nicer flowers. I've got some zinnias. I've got some sunflowers. And goldenrod. Looks like it's going to be a good elderberry year, Dee Dee. My mom likes her. And we have trim on down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to trim them down. Yes, I think that's a wise thing to do. Okay, would you like me to put you on? Put you on my... Can I get a keyboard? Oh! the house of Charles Adams. Right. Born in 1928 and died in 1980. Donna Underwood, born September 14, 1939, and died July 5, 1987. It was only three years ago. Okay, and now I'll go through my the lines here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Harry Lonzo Phillips, the Port Laureate of Clover, and this is the story of the Barton Pageant of 1921. 
Bert starts playing the fiddle. Back in 1921, the people of Barton were a bit bored, and so they got together and decided... Let's make a pageant! Now, there's an American pageant movement going on, and show these and thrilling and historical shows, but they needed some professional advice, so they brought in some outside help. Here it comes. Point. And here's the first play, airplane ever to arrive in Barton. It touched down on the ground. There was Daniel Kogan, eliminating a specialist from General Electric Company. If you walk around sort of aimlessly, that's not so good as standing there. You're in a very strong position standing there. After they wave to you, why don't you wave to them, okay? So, Daniel Kogan, 1,000 watt projector lights, just like they use in the U.S. Navy. You can wave and say hi, and now go over to your now place you with your the And next there was Madeline Randolph from St. Johnsbury. Maybe she was influenced by Isidore Duncan and Mary Vigman. She was the director of the dances. Hi, you can wave, and finally, most open is here, here, and that ass is around. That's your turn. The same thing, turning to the left. Foot back, head broke, okay? And come around, head to ass, ass comes around. Okay? okay? You wanna do a full turn, like, it's like, you're turning 180 degrees. You're, you're doing 180 degree turns. No, you mean no. 360 degrees. 360. No. No, you're not doing 360, 360 degree, turns. degree turns. You're doing 180s, that's all, okay? okay do 180, okay. and then a 180. And then a 180. Right. Okay. That's it, now, bring the other foot right around. But you want to bring it around. You you turn too fast. You turn too fast. You gotta. You want to get your head to her hip. Okay. You want to kiss her ass. All right. Okay. All right. Head and foot same movement. Go. And bring it around. That's it. That's it. Nice Rachel. Nice turn. Nice turn. Okay. Take it to the left. Welcome to the thirty. Annual harmonic reunion of the Chromatic Revolutionary Youth Camp. A one, two, three, well, turn. If you're not yet, here's a chance of it in a lifetime. To be an animal or a McDonald. Who a slave is going to free you? Those who stand in darkness near you from the lowest depths shall hear you. Those who in the darkness see you. Other slaves are going to free you. For it's all nothing, none or everyone. 
One measure for nothing, it goes one, two. start right on time it'll be a first. <laughs> really? We never start on time. Oh, it's, it's, always it's always pretty tight. Pretty tight but
safe cliff. <laughs> cliff kicked the bucket without his foot. <laughs> Will go on operate in spite of the fact that his Blue Cross Blue Shield is expired. <laughs> Will Biff and Stephanie stop being shallow, move to Cleveland and become Harry Krishnas? <laughs> Find out in our next episode in 1991. Same time, same field, different grasshoppers. <laughs>
1914, Zapata was able to put into force an agrarian reform that proposed to destroy at the roots and forever the unjust monopoly of land. of the true builders of our nation. The dispossessed, we are millions, and we thereby call upon our brothers and sisters to join this struggle as the only path so that we will not die of hunger. for this pageant, which involves us training a lot of people to be in the pageant, because it's not only us, but a couple of, maybe a couple of hundred people from the audience. So I guess at the end of this rehearsal, we're going to uh, figure out exactly how we teach people to do the different sections of the pageant. But what we're, what we're thinking of today, in addition to the movements we're about to do, is how there will be an additional 200 people in the pageant. So there'll be like 75 chairs and there'll be so many more flags, etc., etc. It's a swing move. 
and it, it has a sound to it. The sound is, is, um... It's like you go from C to D. And each time we do, when we do, look, look around. When, <coughs> Ready? Go! like this. You want to make it really that it's a, it's a swaying movement because in a, such a big group, if you do things that are too radical, it looks like a totally chaotic movement. So you want to be soft with them. It's very soft. The first sound, we travel. We actually travel. There's a chime. Hey, 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 we're dragging. Then there's a very loud chime, or a couple of chimes, for us to stand upright. And then it's, there's a, like a ratchet. Duggity, 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 duggity. Ding! Funk. Fall. And the fall is slow. It doesn't have to be dramatic or anything. It's, it's quite amazing to see all these puppets just lie down. How long do we stay down dead after our puppets? You'll be dead for like five minutes. <laughs> We're going to be doing the trembling. And then the guard is going to come and we're going to be there. And then you're going to get on your run, you're going to get to me. And just go around me. Don't stay in the front. Go behind me too. And I'll be spinning, spinning, spinning. And you're going to spin, spin, spin. Slow. You don't have to spin fast because then we'll get dizzy. And then when we start doing this, we'll... We get a little, okay? So, I know. The ocean, it does roar And dash against the shore all to praise in their lays that
Forgotten. They want they you. Want you. <laughs> not been forgotten. Not they they want you. you have you not have been, been forgotten. forgotten.